let's jump into this with great excitement. Here we go. Um, numbers 10, 11, and 12. The directions say to tell how many solutions the system has, okay? And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, there are, or there is, no, there are, there are faster ways to see how many solutions <clears throat> a linear system has other than graphing. But right now we're dealing with graphing. So let's go ahead and um, graph these and we'll see what we're doing here. So um, I should have done this earlier, hopefully. This will take just a second. And let's see if we can't get us pulled up with a uh, coordinate plane. If I can't get this fixed here in a couple seconds, there we go. Then I will pause the video. Alright, there we go. And there we go. Alright, now, <coughs> students, um, so let's go ahead and graph each equation and see what we end up with, okay? So, number equation is again look guys over and over and over and over when I have X then Y then an equal sign to the number I use double intercept for me that's really fast so where the X is I'm gonna put a zero and where the Y is I'm gonna put a zero negative zero plus three Y is three Y Divide both sides by 3 and y equals 1. Boy, that's fast, guys. I love the double intercept method. 3 times 0 is 0. Negative x plus 0 is negative x equals 3. So if negative x equals 3, then x equals negative 3. So on the y-axis, I will go to 1. On the x-axis, I will go to negative 3. Okay? And we'll go ahead and sketch that line very quickly. All right? There we go. Now let's, um, let's graph the other line. And see what we come up with where the X is. I will put a zero. And where the Y is, I will put a zero. Two times zero minus six Y is negative six Y. Divide both sides by negative six and Y equals negative five. Six times zero is zero, so we're left with two X minus zero, so two X equals 30. Divide both sides by two, and X equals 15. So for Y, we're gonna go to negative five, one, two, three, four, five. And then for X, we're gonna be way, way over here somewhere. Let's try this real quick. So I'm using the double 
intercept method this equation right here all right and here we go um to put a zero in for y or for x excuse me and then put a zero in for y two times zero is zero zero plus y is y y equals negative one 2x plus 0 is 2x. 2x equals negative 1 divided by 2x equals negative 1 half. So where the y is, I will go to negative 1. Where the x is, I will go to negative 1 half. And then we're going to sketch this line, okay? And so here we go. Now on a test or a quiz, when you sketch your lines, are you listening? If they look parallel, that's great. But you've got to check their slopes, okay? Now, where the x is, I will substitute a 0. And where the y is, I will substitute a 0. And here we go. Um, 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2y is negative 2y. Divide both sides by a negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is positive. 2.5. 2 times 0 is 0. So negative 4x minus 0 is negative 4x. Divide both sides by 4, and you get positive 1.25. Y is positive 2.5. X is 1.25. There we go. So again, it looks like these two lines are parallel, okay? So let's see what we got here. All right, here we go. Compare their slopes. Now, this can be really weird with the rise over run, so bear with me, okay? Here's a point here. And here's the point here, so draw your triangle. Now the run is going to be one half, because remember we went over half. The rise is going to be one, we went up one whole unit. So the first line right here has a rise over a run of 0.5. Got it? Now let's go to the other, we'll change colors. No, we'll use the same color. Now we'll go to this line here. Now be very careful with the rise and the run, okay? First of all, the run, we we are at 1.25 on the x-axis. So the run going across is 1.25 because this point right here is at 1.25. So the run is 1.25. Now the rise, of course, how high up is this red point right here? Well, it's at 2.5, so I'm rising 2.5. So for this slope here, I have a rise over a run. Now, here's what you do. We do not want f uh, decimals within fractions. So move this decimal one place so it's a whole number. But if, the, if you move the decimal down here one place, you've got to move this one one place also. So you have the number 1 up here. Move that decimal one place, and you have the number 10. Let's go over all that again very quickly. I don't want a decimal within a fraction. So I'm going to move this decimal one place, so I have the number five. But if you move that decimal one place, you must take the number one, the decimal's right here, and move it one place. So now you have a ten. So the slope is two. Now to the same thing down here. I have two decimal places down here, one decimal place up here. So move both decimals two places, one, two. So I have 125. Move this decimal two places, one, two, and I have 250. Well, 250 divided by 125 is 2. So yes, they have identical slopes. Thus, these two lines are parallel. Thus, they have no solution. Hope that makes sense. Okay, moving on to number 12. Um, now, let's go ahead and graph these two lines here. And see what we come up with. Um, where the x is, I will put a 0. And where the y is, I will put a 0. Um, 0 plus 2y is 2y equals 16. Divide both sides by 2 and y equals 8. Negative x plus 2 times 0 is negative x. Divide, if negative x equals 16, then x equals negative 16. All right. So I'm going to come up here and write these so I don't lose track of these. <coughs> Excuse me. Your y-intercept is 8 and your x-intercept is negative 16. All right. Let's go ahead and draw some points here. Intercepts x negative 
16. The other one's at positive 8, which is right here. So we'll kind of draw this line the best we can here. <coughs> and now let's go ahead and find the intercepts for the other equation. We'll have to squeeze it in the small space right here, where the x is. I'm going to put a 0. zero is zero. Um, zero minus eight y or zero negative eight y is negative eight y. That equals a negative sixty four divided both sides by negative eight y equals eight. Okay, so that's interesting. We have the exact same y intercept. Now let's find the x intercept where the y is I will put a zero. Um, eight times zero is zero four x minus zero is four x four x equals negative sixty four and yes you guessed it divide both sides by four you get a negative sixteen so guys <coughs> the second line has a y intercept here and an x intercept here so if you graph the second line it falls right on top of this line that means the two lines coincide the two lines coincide so if they coincide that means they're the same line so that means they don't they don't have no solution they don't have one solution they have infinitely many solutions okay because they're the same lines falling on top of each other okay all right moving on to numbers 13 14 and 15 they want us to simply test the ordered pair and see if it's a true solution to see whether it's a solution or not a solution okay so here we go <coughs> for this first equation here's my x here's my y so I have five times 5 minus parentheses negative 2 equals 27. So where the x is, I put a 5. Where the y is, I put a negative 2. Don't forget there's a negative sign there. And we're good. Here we go. 5 times 5 is 25. Negative times a negative is positive 2. This one checks, doesn't it, guys? 27 equals 27 check. But this ordered pair must work in both equations. So here's an x. So I'm going to put a 5 there. Here's a y. I'm going to put a negative 2. And let's see if we get negative 23. I think we do. Negative times a positive is negative 15. Positive times a negative is negative 8. Negative 15. You owe me $15. You owe me 8 more. That's negative 23 equals negative 23. Check. This order bears satisfied both equations. So yes, it is a solution. All right. Number 16. Alright, here's my x value, here's my y value, here's an x right here, so negative parentheses 4, then positive 6, and then where the y is, I will substitute 0. Now again, excuse me for a second, <coughs> I don't want you to lose sight. I don't want you to lose sight of the trees for the forest, as the saying goes. Don't lose sight of what you're doing. You're testing an ordered pair to see if it's truly a solution or if it's not a solution of the linear system. So here we go. Um, negative times a positive is negative 4. 6 times 0 is 0. Negative 4 uh, plus 0 is negative 4 equals 4. Does not check, so we know right away if it fails. Look, guys, if it fails in one equation, there is no need to test it in the other equation. It's no good. It is not a solution. All right, number 15. Here's my x. Here's my y. Here's an x right here. So 2 parentheses 9, negative 9, and then parentheses 1 equals 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Negative 9 times 1 is negative 9. Positive 18, negative 9 is 9 equals, bring down your 9, 9 equals 9. Check. So far, so good. Now, let's take our other equation. Where the x is here, I'm going to put a 9, so negative parentheses 9, and then positive 8, and then a y, which is a 1, equals 17. Negative, positive 9, the signs are different, so we have a 9. 8 and 1 is a positive 8. This would be a negative 9. Sorry, students. Did I say positive? Let's go back. A negative and a positive. A negative times a positive gives you negative. 8 times 1 is 8. Now you owe me $9. You have $8, so you pay off 8. You're left with negative 1. That is not a true statement, so this ordered pair does not work. This ordered pair is not a solution of this linear system. Okay, and now for the last 
last six problems, we're going to solve systems by graphing, and then we're going to check our answers like we did back here, um, like we did back here, making sure our answers are accurate, okay? So number 25, let's uh, solve this equation, and so here we go. Um, let's start with this equation right here, where the x is, I will put a zero. I'm so glad they gave you a problem like this. Watch what happens. It's really interesting. And where the Y is, I will put a zero. X, zero plus two Y is two Y. Divide both sides by two. Zero divided by two is zero. Um, two times zero is zero. X plus zero is X. X equals zero. Uh-oh. The X intercept is zero and the Y intercept is zero. That's only one point. That's only one point. The y-intercept is zero. The x-intercept is zero. I am so glad they finally gave you a problem like this. I've been waiting for this to happen. <clears throat> the double intercept method is awesome. Whenever you have x, then a y, then an equal sign, then a number, it is the best method to use. However, there is one time you cannot use the double intercept method. It won't work. And that's when you have x and y and the number zero over here. Okay? Anytime your intercepts are zero, you cannot use the double intercept method. So, we're going to have to use a different method, aren't we? Sure we are. <coughs> we're going to have to use, I don't know, how about table of values? We can do that pretty quickly. So, where the um, x is, I'll put zero, one, two. So let's put a zero in for x. And we already know what we're going to get out. We're going to get out zero because we just did that a second ago. We put a zero in for x and we got out a zero. Now let's put in one for x. Put a one in for x, positive two y equals zero. One plus, uh, one plus two y, of course, is one plus two y equals zero. Bring your one over and make it a negative one. Divide both sides by 2, and you get a negative 1 half. And now lastly, we're going to substitute 2 in for x. Let's put a 2 right here. 2 positive 2y equals 0. Bring your 2 over and make it a negative 2, because now we're solving for y to see what y equals. Divide both sides by 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So my ordered pairs are 0, 0 over 1 and down a half, over one and down a half, and then over two and down one. So my line will look something like this, okay? Now it's gonna be hard for you to get the right answer in your paper, <coughs> unless you're really neat. So please be neat, okay, and be careful. I know I'm not being very neat, but you need to use straight edges and probably graphing paper. Now you don't have to. But I'm just saying it's a lot easier to get the right answers out. Okay, look at the next equation. Do we have x, y, and then a zero right here like we did up here? No, we don't. So, will the double intercept method work on this equation? Yes, it will. So let's use it, okay? Where the x is, I'm going to put a zero. And where the y is, I'm going to put a zero. Zero plus y is y, so y equals negative three. Negative x plus zero is negative x equals negative three. So if negative x equals negative three, x equals three. So my y-intercept is negative three. And my x-intercept is positive three. Right there. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and draw our line here and connect those two points. And let's see. It looks like we have an answer, guys. The answer is they're intersecting about right here. Where is that on the x-axis at? Where is this um, intersection point on the y-axis? Negative 1. So the ordered pair would be 2, negative 1. And you know, on second thought, I'll be honest, guys, I'm not being lazy as a teacher. That's not my reason. I just try to be respectful to you guys. You're older students. You've had algebra 1 geometry. I'm not going to make you substitute this ordered pair in. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you substitute this into both equations, you would get out a true statement because the answer is... Two negative one. Now, on a test or a quiz, do you think it would be wise to maybe um, uh, to check your answer by substituting into both equations? Of course, it would be. That'd be very wise to do. But I'm not going to do that now because it's a pretty simple procedure, and we just did three of those a couple minutes ago, and it's it's we have the answer here, so we know we're right. But make sure you know how to do that. Okay. All right, number twenty.
six. Okay, I have x, y, then a number here that's not zero, so I'm going to use the double intercept method. Negative two, put a zero in for x, and then uh, negative two x, and then put a zero in for y, and that equals five. Two times zero is zero, zero plus y is y, y equals five. Negative two x plus zero is negative two x equals five. Divide both sides by negative two, and x equals negative two and a half. So here we go. F on the y axis, we'll go to five. On the x axis, negative two and a half. And let's sketch our line the best that we can, okay? And again, please, usually, please use a straight edge. Please be very neat. Oh, Mr. Aaron, you're just trying to get us to be neat. No, I'm trying to get you to get the right answer. And the neater you are, and the neater your graphs are, um, the better chances are your graph will be accurate, okay? All right, now the second equation. Well, guys, we can do this in our head. Come on, put a zero in for x. Um, y equals eight. Now put a zero in for y. X equals eight. That's not too difficult. Okay, I'm, again, I'm not being lazy or trying to rush. If you need to work those out, feel free to do that. But it's really pretty obvious. Put a zero in for x. Zero plus y is y. Y equals eight. Put a zero in for y. X plus zero is x. X equals eight. So not too difficult. Okay, so here's here's eight on the y-axis. Here's eight on the y-axis right there. Okay, now let's go ahead and connect our two points and get a line and see where they're intersecting at. All right, so... Um, Now my answer on this one's not going to be very accurate because I'm not using a straight edge. They should have intersected right here at 1, 7. Now to be honest with you, it's good for you to see that happen to me because it shows you how important it is to be neat, guys. Okay? <coughs> with, with this, you know, program here, I guess I could do this. I could do this, 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 and try to draw a line like this. But the problem with that is, is it's hard to line up the two points perfectly. But nonetheless, um, my point is, is be really careful and be neat, okay? Um, on a test or a quiz, I will almost always make sure you have whole number answers when you're solving a system by graphing. So that's the answer. And if you took this answer right here and substituted it into this equation, in this equation, you would get out to true statements. Okay. All right, moving on to number 27. 27, here we go. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to uh, use my double intercept method. So where X is right here, I'm going to put a zero. And then where Y is right here, I'm going to substitute a zero. And here we go. Two times zero, zero plus Y is Y. Y equals four. 2x plus 0 is 2x. 2x equals 4. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 2. And so my y-intercept is 4 and my x-intercept is 2. Alright, we'll try using this and see if that helps a little bit. So, there we go. And then we'll go the opposite direction too, of course. Alright, now uh, let's continue on. <coughs> Here we go. Now, um, let's see what we have here. First of all, 
here's my x. I'm going to substitute 0. I'm graphing my first equation. I'm using the double intercept method. Now, <coughs> for my y right here, I'm going to substitute a 0. Again, I'm graphing the first equation by using the double intercept method. And here we go. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 4y is 4y. Divide both sides by negative 4. Y equals negative 2. And probably a lot of you by now are doing this in your head and not even showing your work. Excuse me. <coughs> Which is fine. Okay. Now 3x. Uh, 4 times 0 is 0. 3x plus 0 is 3x. Negative 8 divided by 3 is, well, a negative divided by a positive is negative. 8 divided by 3 would be 2 and 2 thirds. Okay. So my y-intercept is negative 2. There we go. My x-intercept is negative 2 and 2 thirds, so approximately right there. Now let's go ahead and do the best we can to sketch our line there. <coughs> and let's see what we get here. Um, Go. 
Now, let's graph the second equation, which is right <coughs> here, where the x is. I'm going to substitute a 0. And where the y is, I'm going to substitute a 0. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus y is y. So y equals 3. Um, three uh, negative 3x plus 0 is negative 3x equals 3. Divide both sides by negative 3x equals negative 1. So the x-intercept is going to be negative 1. And the y-intercept is going to be positive 3. All right. So if we draw this line, it looks like they're going to intersect. Just by kind of eyeballing it, it looks like they're going to hit right there. We'll see if we're right in a second. Sometimes we'll get it right, sometimes we'll be off a little bit, we'll see. All right, so where is this intersection point? Where is that at on the x-axis? Positive 1. Where is that on the y-axis? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it looks like my ordered pair is 1, 6. We'll see if we're right. Okay, good, we are. Now, this ordered pair here, if you were to substitute it into both equations, would give you 2 statements. On a test or a quiz, you can check your answer that way. <coughs> Number 30, excuse me. <coughs> okay, here we go. Now, let's graph our first equation right here. This one here, by using the double intercept method. So where the x is, I'm going to substitute a 0. Then where the y is, I'm going to substitute a 0. times 0 is 0, 0 plus y is y, y equals 13, all right? 2x plus 0 is 2x, 2x equals 13, divide both sides by 2, x equals um, 6 and a half. So we're going to have to do a little finagling here, kind of extend our line a little bit if we can do that.